So welcome back everybody and uh, remember a few months back I bought this uh, HP iPack uh, Pocket PC, the uh, low tier, low grade RZ1715 series. Now at the time I mostly complained about the low, um, well the low quality materials used for, for its construction and well, basically, I called it the disposable iPack. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to test that theory since this iPack did start up, but the screen didn't calibrate, meaning there is some issue with the touch screen. Well, luckily for me, I just got a second one. So this one looks much better and, uh, well, it came with an interesting add-on, this uh, strange looking uh, holder sleeve which acts as a GPS and an internet connector. Now I say GPS because it has TomTom Tom written on it and uh, what other reason should there be for a TomTom Tom add-on other than a, well, a GPS unit and I believe this should click into some socket and be used as a, as a standalone GPS unit in a vehicle. Uh, pretty interesting uh, sleeve and accessory. I had never seen this before in an iPack. I have seen GPS um, antennas that double down as SD card slots, but not this, uh, this type of uh, accessory. Anyway, I'm rambling. So before I get lost into any more pointless detail, I propose we take this baby for a spin. So anyway, uh, I have here a charger and conveniently I also have um, this uh, just this charging slot which is a proprietary HP design. Let me just focus here. You know, usually you can only charge these iPacks with the um, with a dedicated um, USB cable, but uh, HP luckily uh, provided an, an optional uh, design. This uh, only this um, power adapter with its proprietary design right here, and uh, naturally, being the hoarder that I am, I got these two or three weird-looking, quirky. Uh, add-ons and let me just plug this in the adapter and we'll give this high pack a spin now it should start up right away which it does actually so there you have it folks the HP iPack RZ1715 model now it has a QVGA uh, screen that's uh, 240 by 320 pixel resolution and it only sports a 3.5 uh, inch diagonal but on the upside it's quite crisp at 65,000 uh, colors supposedly so let me just uh, quickly calibrate this while I speak some more about the HP iPack it is running on Microsoft Windows Mobile 2003 and this one is a German unit I could uh, change it to English but uh, maybe that will be done in a future video so yeah there we have it calibrated and let's look at the specs yeah pretty nice cr uh, crisp screen and I I recognize this uh, actually this uh, quite nice uh, uh, theme here from my HP iPack 4700 series um, let me just look at the settings r real quick and mention a few uh, options along the way as we look at this thing. So information, this is Windows Mobile 2003, um, yada yada yada. So it's got a Samsung S3C 2410 processor which if uh, the internet uh, is to be believed is a, is a 203 megahertz processor and uh, well 
Not much else uh, besides this. Uh, the memory is supposed to be 32 megabytes uh, th uh, of, um, well, of memory, but actually you only have available about 27 of those. And uh, yeah, that's about it. No specific connections or anything like that. You just get infrared ports, so I, I suspect the reasoning behind this add-on is so you could go, I don't know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and the sorts. Um, sadly though, I don't think this is also a power connector. Oh no, wait, I believe it is. So what I should try right now is to connect this device to this sleeve using this uh, AC adapter. So let me just do that. I'll quickly, briefly un unplug the iPad. Hopefully it will not turn off right away. Connect it to the sleeve and let's see if it charges up. Here is the power connector and no. Actually, wouldn't you know it, this is all the story with typical early 2000s devices. Um, the <laughs> The TomTom Tom adapter sleeve doesn't uh, isn't compatible with the AC adapter from the original one from HP. So yeah, bit of a shame there. Means that not only I can't use this sleeve, but I cannot cannot show you what it actually does. I have no clue as to its function. Um, that is because I cannot find an adapter for it. Well, anyway, it's an obscure and rather quirky um, add-on addition to the uh, nice looking but ultimately flawed RZ1715. Now I mentioned this thing as being flawed and I stay by my, uh, my uh, assessment. I don't really like the construction of this device. It's actually very plasticky. The fact that the battery is built uh, on board doesn't really bother me, but uh, the plastic bag surely does. And while this has seen, this is uh, some sort of weird uh, iPad karma since right now the new device that I purchased for only two euros is refusing to start up. Meanwhile, the old one, which I got for about three euros and I filmed a while back, is starting up just nicely, but will refuse to calibrate as I am certain of this. Let me just try to prove myself right here. And this would be the weirdest uh, thing ever if this thing would start up right now. Yeah, so the screen calibration doesn't work on my old one and seems the battery doesn't work on my new one. Let's, let me try to connect it again, see if this is the case or not. I seem to have burned the battery during f the filming of this particular clip. Uh, anyway, I'm not worried about that since I'm not a big fan of these gadgets and I can always um, switch the battery from this device and install it in the new one or rather new for me. So anyway, there you have it. Another potentially pointless but maybe entertaining uh, clip on uh, weird, quirky and obsolete tech stuff that I collect so you don't have to. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.